What is going on guys, Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of the new PS4 Jailbreak tutorial series. So in this episode, I'm going to be covering how to customize the PS4 home screen on 9.00 by doing things like changing your icons using Lappy's Icon Mask homebrew app, as well as also how to remove any sort of system apps that you don't want on your PS4 to kind of clean up the look of the home screen, and also how to change the background music as well. And these are permanent changes that you can apply so that when you restart your PS4, you will still have those changes applied to the console. Whereas there are th other kind of customization things that you can do, like create your own custom themes, which does give you more customization options. But when you make a custom theme, it will reset every time you restart the console. So you'll have to keep applying the theme every single time, which obviously isn't ideal. But if you're looking for a guide on how to make custom themes, um, or how to install, you know, actual normal PS4 themes, then check out the video I'll put in the cards in the top right hand corner and down in the video description, which shows you how to do that. But for this video, we're going to be looking at permanent customization that you can do to the home screen without applying any custom themes or anything. So let's get into this. So first of all, we'll look at how to use Icon Mask to customize these icons for all of the different apps on your PS4. This is a great new homebrew app created by Lappy. So to install it, all you're going to need to do is switch on over to your computer. Obviously, make sure you have a USB drive and make sure that USB drive is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. So just reformat the drive by right clicking and going to format. If you don't already have it in XFAT or FAT32 format. And of course, make sure you back up any data before formatting. So anyway, once you've done that, you can then copy the package file, which will be linked in the video description into the root of the USB drive for Icon Mask. And then you can inject the USB drive and plug it into your PS4. OK, so once you're on the PS4, obviously make sure you've gone onto your exploit page and that you've ran the actual PS4 jailbreak. So you've loaded your gold hen payload to jailbreak the PS4. So make sure you've done that first. Once you run gold hen, you can then go into the settings go down to the debug settings game package installer and install the lappy 20007.package which is our icon mask application so we're going to install this and run it so when you first launch the app you can see down at the bottom it says read and write permissions obtained on system folders sometimes when you launch this application you get red text that says it was not able to get read and write permissions in system folders I'm not sure the exact way to fix it because sometimes it fixes itself just by relaunching the app. Sometimes you have to restart or log out of the PS4 and log back in and then launch the app and it seems to fix it. There's other people recommending enabling things like FTP in the gold hen settings to fix it. Um, or another thing I did once was just loaded another homebrew app like Apollo. I launched the Apollo save tool and then exited out of the Apollo save tool and launched back in to Icon Mask. And then it gave me the full read and write permissions. So a bit strange how sometimes it just does not have the read and write permissions. So, you know, I am using a slightly older version of Gold Hen. So perhaps if you use the latest version of Gold Hen, you might not run into that issue. But uh, yeah, if you do run into that issue about not getting the permissions in the system folders, then just try all of those different steps that I just mentioned there. And then you should be able to get it to work. So now that we have full read and write permissions in system folders, we can apply any one of these different icons. As you can see, we can scroll through them. So there's quite a few different icons that you can kind of skip through. So Lappy has added quite a few more since the initial version. You've got these kind of PS4 disc icons, PS4 game cover icons, and many, many others, as you can see right here. There's even like PS Vita icons and, and PS1 icons as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, you can just apply whichever one you want. For example, we'll do these PS5 icons with white borders. So we'll also add the transparent folder icon uh, because otherwise the folders look a bit broken if they, you know, the icons don't really look good when you have the folder icons showing. So I recommend putting on transparent folder icon and then you can apply the icons right there. And that will just go through all of the different apps that you have installed on the PS4 and apply the icons to every single one. And there we go. So the mask has been applied. Reboot the PS4 to see the changes. You normally don't have to reboot to see changes, but to apply them properly, you should reboot. But to actually see the changes, you can just close the application. You can also like open the internet browser and close it. 
and that kind of refreshes everything. So as you can see, we've got all of the apps here showing up correctly as we should. And you can see the folder icons look better here when they're transparent. So you don't actually see the folder icon, you just see the icons of the apps that are inside the folder, which looks a bit better. So yeah, this is kind of like a PS5 style icon with a white border. So yeah, I'll probably show you some of the other icons. I'll just like flick through them real quick here uh, in posts so that you can see what all of these other icons look like. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a few good ones in there that you can apply. Now, these are not custom icons in the sense that, you know, you're not actually changing the, the image. You're just changing the icon style, the way the icon is displayed. That's what you're doing here. So you could kind of call it a custom icon, but, you know, the actual image itself for the icon is the same. So if you want to actually replace that, you can do that as well, which I'll show you right here. So if you go back into Icon Mask, so going back into Icon Mask, we can go to pre-made icons and this will allow you to replace a specific icon with any icons that you put on your USB drive. So it says here, insert a USB stick with a folder called icons uh, that contain your pre-made icons. So if we plug our USB back into our computer and then from here, I've got some icons. So these are like PS5 style icons that I created a while ago for a custom theme. So I'm going to use these just as an example. They're not very good icons, to be honest. I'd, I'm not the best at, you know, graphic design or whatever. So, so if we go back onto our USB drive, we're just going to create a folder called icons. I'm not sure if it has to be in uppercase, but I'm just going to do it anyway, uh, just in case. So then we'll just copy all of our icons here into this folder. And then all you have to do, again, make sure that's in the root of the drive as well, by the way. So make sure the icons folder is in the root of the USB drive, not inside any subfolders. So once you've done that, we can then go ahead and eject the drive, plug it back into our PS4. Okay, so from here, I can hit the triangle button to reload the USB. And as you can see, the first icon in that icons list shows up with the actual folder name. So you can see them all showing up here. So I hit R1 and L1 to switch between the different icons. So if I find a system icon here somewhere, if I keep going, we'll eventually get to the system icons. So there's the web browser icon. So if I want to replace that with the web browser icon from the USB, I can just select it here, maybe the 4K one, and then hit apply. And there we go, it changes it. And then any other ones. So if I find the icon for this, there it is, gallery. I can apply that and change the gallery icon. We'll do the library icon as well because that's one of the ones that's showing right there. We'll apply that. And then once you've applied it, sort of same principle applies, I guess. If I press circle to go back, if you change the icons, restart your PS4 so it can see the changes or you can change the mask and apply it. So from here, I will quit out of here. Now, last time I did this, it kind of screwed up the PS4 a little bit for a second. So let's see. Oh no, okay, it's fine. One time when I closed the Icon Mask program, it kind of glitched out the UI and gave me an error code after a few seconds, but you know, it was fine after that. So yeah, anyway, as you can see, the icons did change. Although it, of course, it doesn't apply the actual theme to the icon. Unfortunately, you'd have to create your own custom icon for that, I suppose. But uh, yeah, there you go. As you can see, you can change out your icons that way as well. So. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to get rid of any apps that you don't want on the home screen, like the library app right here, for example, or, you know, TV and video or live from PlayStation or any of that stuff that you typically don't need to use on a jailbroken PS4 because a lot of those sort of system apps use PSN, which you can't access anyway on a PS4. So it's kind of pointless to have them. But because they're system apps, you can't get rid of them. You can't hit options and delete them. So you're kind of stuck with them. Now, most people just put them in a folder, but you know, it'd, it'd be better to actually get rid of them. So what you can do is hide them and make them completely invisible so that they, so that they don't show up on the home screen. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right here. So first things first, we're going to head into settings, go to Gold Hen settings and enable the FTP server in Gold Hen. So we're now hosting an FTP server on our PS4's IP address using port 2121. So if we switch over to our computer again and load an FTP client on the computer like FileZilla. And then from here, we're going to type in that IP address. So 192.168.137.161. 
and port number 2121. Quick connect to connect to our PS4. Again, all the download links you'll need for any of this stuff will be linked down in the video description. So once you're in here, we're then going to go into the system data folder, then go into the PRIV folder, then go down to the MMS folder, and this contains your database file. So you can see there's an app.db file. So this is our application database that has the index of all the different apps that are installed on your PS4, on your account. So we're going to copy that out here to our desktop. And then I would recommend creating a backup file. So I'll just add .back to the end of this to use it as our backup. And then I'll extract the app database again so that we have two copies of it. That way, if we accidentally mess up the database file, we can just restore our backup to get things working again. So next, we're going to use a program called DB Browser for SQL Lite, which again will be linked in the description. And this is what we're going to use to edit our app database. All you need to do is drag in the app database file into the program, or you can click File and Open Database in order to browse for it. So once you've actually got it open, we can then go into the Browse Data section. And then from the table drop down, we're going to select the App Browse uh, table. Now you can see in my case, I have three App Browse tables. And that's, I believe, because I have different accounts on my PS4. So there's a table for each account, I think. I think that's how it works. So anyway, the top one should be my first profile, my main profile, which is the first account I created on my PS4. So it should be the top one, which is my main account. So I'm going to open that one. If you don't know which table it is, then again, whatever your main account is probably has more apps on it than any other account. So, you know, it'll be the largest table. So anyway, as you can see, we've got all of the different apps that are listed here in this table. So the one I want to get rid of is the library table, which is number 17 right here. So if I highlight that and then scroll over to the right, you can see there is a visible column. And right now that's set to one, which means it is visible. If I set that to zero, that means it will be invisible. So just change any apps that you don't want to show up on the home screen, change them to zero in the visible column, and then that will make them disappear. So all you have to do is go ahead and write changes up here to apply those changes to the database and then close the database from here, and then you can safely close the program. So once you've done that, you can then copy that app.db file back over to your PS4's hard drive. And then from there, if we go back to our PS4, we can then run the internet browser and close it to refresh. So you can see right now, the library is still showing up, but if I open the browser and then close it, it now disappears, it's now invisible. So there we go, that's it. That's how you clean up your home screen and get rid of any unwanted apps that are system apps that you normally are not able to delete. You can just get them hidden right there. There is an option as well in the database if you want to actually remove the app. There is also a column called the can remove column, which you can change. I wouldn't really recommend doing that though, because yeah, it's not advised to delete system apps from the PS4 and uh, also you can run into a bug where you're not able to delete any other apps without uh, kind of fixing the database. So yeah, I, I highly recommend not just removing the apps, even though you can just change the can remove column to one, which will allow you to delete the application, but it can cause other bugs and deleting system apps isn't advised. So I would highly recommend you just make the app invisible because it's much easier, less hassle. So I would recommend doing that. So anyway, that's it. We've now got our custom icons and we've also removed any system apps that we don't want on our PS4. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to change the background music. So right now I don't have the background music enabled, but if I go down into sound and screen, I can enable the system music right here. So as you can hear, this is the default sort of background music that you're typically normally hear on the PS4 that you're probably very used to. So we're going to change this for any other, you know, music that we want to add there. And again, this will be a permanent change so that you'll always have your custom music playing in the background. So in order to do this, we're again going to use FTP. So if we switch back over to our computer and we go back on FTP here, we go back to our root directory, which is the forward slash. So if we go back to our root directory, we can then go into the MNT folder go into the sandbox folder, 
go into the npxs20001 underscore 000 folder. Then from here, we're going to go into the app zero folder and then go into system BGM. And this BGM main.89 file, that is your main background music. So 89 is the audio format, the kind of compressed audio format that the PS4 uses. So any music that you want to add is going to have to be converted to an 89 file in order for it to work. So right now I've got the Days Gone theme, which I'm going to use as my background music. So I've got it as a WAV file, a you know wave sound format. It needs to be in that format because we're going to use a converter which converts WAV format to 89 format. So obviously if your music is a different audio format like a you know like an mp3 or something then you'll have to use some other audio converter to first convert it to a WAV file and then you'll be able to convert it from a WAV file to an 89 file. So in order to do this I'm going to use this XMA to 89 converter. It's a pretty bare bones converter but it should work for what we need. So we're just going to copy your music your WAV file into the converter and then just hit the convert button and wait a few seconds for that to complete and wait a few seconds and there we go we now have an 89 file so that file has now been converted to an 89 file so all you have to do is rename it to the same name as the original one the original theme on the ps4 which is bgm underscore main dot 89 so we're just going to rename that to uh, bgm underscore main dot 89 and then rename the original one so just add something like dot back at the end so that you have a backup of the original music. If you ever want to change it back for whatever reason, then you have that file, that backup file there that you can just rename back to the original name to get the original music back on and then just copy your custom music over. So now we have the custom music BGM main dot 89. So again, if you ever want to change it back, you can just delete this one and then rename the backup file back to the original name. And then you'll have your normal system music restored. So that is essentially how that works. So yeah, now that we have the custom music on there, we should be able to hear it on our PS4. So by default, it will continue playing the normal background music until you refresh it, which you can do by just running the web browser and closing it is the quickest way to refresh. So if we open the web browser and close it, you can hear that we now have the Days Gone theme playing as our background music instead of the normal PS4 theme. So yeah, that's pretty much it for customization. You can also do things like change your um, avatar image, your profile image, uh, which I've covered in a previous video when I was covering the web activator. So I'll also have that video linked down in the video description. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's how you customize the PS4 home screen by changing the icon style, changing the icons with a custom icon, and also how to obviously delete system apps and stuff that you don't want or hide system apps that you don't want on the ps4 to kind of clean up the the home screen and also of course how to change your background music as well again if you want to take customization to the next step you can of course create your own custom themes check out my video i've already made on how to make a custom theme uh, i've actually made a whole program that's that you can use to make custom themes with so you can check that video out if you want more customization. Just bear in mind that custom themes are not permanent. You can, of course, also install normal retail themes, uh, which are obviously not custom made themes, but I'm talking about official themes for the PS4. You can install those and those are permanent as well. So if you want to do that, that's another way of customizing the PS4. But in terms of customizing it to your own liking uh, permanently so that, you know, when you restart the PS4, these changes will still be applied then this is the way to do it right here. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.